Okay, so I'm here to speak to you on gender and climate change, looking at the African raw context. Um, how many of you understand what we mean when we talk about gender? I was told this is a room with ex of experts. You're all familiar with all these terms. You've been working in programs. So I understand that my audience is very well equipped with the definition of some of these terms. So can I get a show of hands? How many of you understand what the concept of gender is or what it means? Yay, thank you. So it makes my work easy. I don't have to explain that. What about gender equality? Gender equality. Okay. Quite a number of you. All right. So basically, just for the few people here, gender equality, please be clear that we're not talking about men and women being the same. I think I can really, I really want to emphasize that we're not saying they are the same. All we are saying is that we would like the men and women to have equal opportunities, have equal access to different conditions that allow them to access uh, the different resources or have the, the various opportunities to be able to fulfill or to, to, feel, to, to access or have full potential for what they can achieve in their own lives, okay? So we are not basically saying that they are same. So we are saying men and women, boys and girls must have equal conditions and opportunities for realizing their full human rights and potential for contributing to and benefiting from economic, social, cultural, and political development. Are we clear on that? Are we clear on that? Yes. Can I get a yes? yes? Awesome, all right. Okay, next slide, please. How many of you in this room do not believe that climate change is real? How many of you? Do we all believe that climate change is real? Awesome, great, that is really great. Wow, you guys are really wonderful. All right, next slide, please. Okay, so given that you all believe that it's real, we've seen the extreme climatic events that we have experienced on the African continent, this scenes I'm sure you've seen all in media what we have what we have um, what we have seen happening around African continent. Uh, these scenes you are all familiar with. Last year we had quite a number of uh, act uh, extreme activities occurring, and I'm sure some of you saw the devastation that also Cyclone Idai um, caused. Did you see that? Did you follow? Did you follow? If you're all in climate change, you would follow these events, right? Okay, so thank you. So we're all in agreement. Next slide, please. So if you're all in agreement, you would know that on closer scrutiny of these extreme climatic events, we have come to understand that gender we have come to understand the gender dimensions of climate change. We have also come to understand that all the climate sensitive sectors are characterized by gender dimensions. We have also come to understand and know and acknowledge that rural women and girls often bear the brunt when these sectors are affected by climatic events. I think the research has shown us this, we've seen the scenes and we know that indeed women and girls, especially in the rural setting, really experience a lot of challenges when affected by these climatic events. We also know that they suffer disproportionately due to a number of reasons. These are mainly attributed to the fundamental gender differences and the inequalities that are deeply rooted in social cultural norms, religious and political rights, institutionalized rules, and we find gender inequalities more pronounced in rural communities. If you go into rural communities, I understand you're all working in different programs. I hope you are working in rural communities and you have seen this for yourself or observed this for yourself. Have you? Have you? Good. So we are all in agreement. Nobody's going to nod and say, hey, you are talking nonsense here, right? Okay. So often also we find that rural women are denied equal access to social and economic capital, productive resources, livelihood diversification strategies, information, health services, education, skills, technology, which are all vital in shaping and determining their ability to respond to climate change. We have seen that happen as well. And the research has shown us that. And I think Cyclone Idea really, I, I die, also really emphasized the vulnerability of men and women. Could you please go to the next slide? We saw that um, uh, 
because women are also, also having, to, having a lot of challenges with access to healthcare, Cyclone Idai also demonstrated this, where we saw close to 75,000 pregnant women left vulnerable due to lack of reproductive health services, sanitation, and clean water. And we saw the stories where some of them had to give birth in the shelters that they were in without any proper uh, health services and no proper um, doctors to assist them, so their lives also being at risk. And these are the things we usually don't think about when we're experiencing these extreme climatic events. So, on that note, could I have the next slide, please? We also acknowledge, okay, as much as women and girls are vulnerable in, in, the, in the rural setting, we also acknowledge and we have seen, if you have been in the field, we have also seen that rural women have a central role to play in combating climate change because of the kind of knowledge that they have. Have you all listened to the rural women? When you, in your programs, have you spoken to them? Have you? Have you listened to some of the information that they have and some of the ideas that they have? I've done it and I've listened and I've left myself going, wow, only, if only we could build on some of this knowledge. If only we could take some of this information and bring some of these ideas into our policy making, um, uh, policy making meetings where we sit and uh, look at ideas on how we can help rural communities combat climate change or adapt to climate change or cope with climate change. If we could get those ideas and build on it, that would be such a wonderful, awesome and effective way of combating climate change. So rural women do have an important role to play because of that knowledge. We know that they, are very, they have a critical role to play also in developing their communities in also uplifting the rural economies. So I think if we can bear that in mind as we engage with them and not just see them as victims but also to see them as key role players as agents of change I think we can really go a very long way on that so we've been talking about gender equality for a very long time who in this room can tell me how long we've been talking about gender equality and where we are today anybody here how long have we been talking about gender equality how many years 30 years anybody else Minimum 30 years. Anybody else? 150 years. <laughs> Anybody else? Any other different number? No. Okay. How many years? If we look back, we know that the, U the UN Charter, which came into force in 1945, was calling for gender equality. So how many years ago is that? Let's see, quick calculations. How many years ago is that? 70? 74, right? So, 74 years later, we are still talking gender equality. What's wrong? What's going on? We know that the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, also in, launched in 1948, was also calling for gender equality. And still today, we are still talking about gender equality. So what is happening? We also know that since then, we've had numerous national, regional, international legal instruments all aimed at eliminating discrimination based on gender in an effort to promote gender equality. We have done that. There are many of them. You are in the field, you know them, right? We have all kinds of tools to help us promote gender equality. Why have we gone through this trouble? Why? It's because we acknowledge that in all spheres of life, in all spheres of development, that gender equality is a powerful driver for growth and social justice. Do we agree on that? Do we agree on that? Yes. Is it a yes? I have people full of, a room full of people and I can't hear answers. Is the answer yes? Yes. Thank you. So if the answer is yes, what are you doing in your own programs to promote gender equality? What are you doing? I want to hear that from you when I'm done with my discussion. What are you doing in your programs? Are you promoting gender equality? Are you mainstreaming gender in your programs, in your budgets, in whatever you are doing in decision making for your programs? Are you mainstreaming gender equality in that? So I hope we'll be able to discuss that. And yet nowhere in the world, okay, today, have women and men achieved equality? We are asking the question, why? We need to look, go back to the drawing board and ask ourselves why. Some of the answers I have shared, but I'm not going to share with you today until you tell me what the problem is in your own spheres of work, okay? So, on the African continent, we still have significant inequalities which remain a major challenge. 
women and girls continue to face profound gender inequalities which do great harm, not just to the individual, but to the nations as well, to the nations, because we've heard that gender equality is very significant for development as well, especially in our rural setting. If we are talking about rural development, we need to engage with those rural women because of the kind of knowledge that they have and the input that they can have in deciding their own way of development, okay? Uh, uh, going into the knowledge that they have. So I do not disregard at the same time some of the progress that we have made. For sure, I, do. We know, I know we've made a bit of progress. But for me, really, when I look back from 1945 to where we are today, I feel that we should have achieved so much more by now, so much more. So I do acknowledge some of the progress that we have made. But please, can we ensure that we do more to make this promotion of gender equality quite faster, otherwise we are going to lose out on a lot. So we have a very long way to go. We have so much work to do. Because I'm saying after all that is said and done, after all the tools, after all the policies, after everything we have gone through, we continue to experience gender blindness also in climate change. And we turn a blind eye on rural women and girls. We really do. If you look at the work that we've been, we've been doing, I've been evaluating some of the projects. I've, I've been invited to evaluate some of the projects that have come to an end. And I do see in those evaluations that there is so much negligence on their ideas, their views. We are imposing so much on them. And we are not engaging with them to ensure that we have real good uh, programs to help us achieve this gender equality. So we really need to work a lot harder, okay? We are still having to justify why we need to adapt gender responsive climate policies. Why are we still doing that? Yes, we've been talking about it for a long time. We are still talking about promoting women's leadership in climate action. We really need to look into ourselves and see what we can do. Today, we have the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, both in the form of dedicating the goal number five, which is uh, gender equality, to achieve gender equality. We also, uh, and we know that through this goal, we can also be able to achieve all the other related uh, gender targeted goals. And we know that climate action is one of them, which is our SDG uh, th uh, 13, uh, being able to uh, ensure that we mainstream gender into our climate actions. Today, we also have the gender action plan of the UNFCCC, which was adopted during the COP23, and under the Lima work program on gender. We have that tool as well. We also have the African Working Group on Gender and Climate Change, which was established in 2013. We also have gender equality mentioned 75% in the 75% of the nationally determined contribution uh, submissions from the sub-Saharan Africa, we have those as well. So it's not like we don't have the knowledge, it's not like we don't have the information. We just need to ask ourselves, what must we do to ensure that we really achieve this agenda? So the list can go on. And without translating this into concrete action, I can tell you we are wasting our time. We are wasting our resources. We know that we use a lot of money to come up with these policies and have these conferences. So if we come here and discuss, but we don't translate in that into action, it's just a waste of our time and resources for doing that. So we seem to be very good at making agreements and signing them. But when it comes to action, we are not walking the talk. We honestly are not walking the talk, and we need to walk the talk. Okay, so I really am appealing to that. Can we, uh, okay, the next slide. So we can agree that gender equality basically is fundamental to combating climate change effectively. Without the involvement of rural women and girls, there is no climate justice. The world's sustainable future cannot be achieved. There will be no rural development. And indeed, we've been talking about the future being female. There will be no future that is female. So basically, the future will not be female. So what are you doing to make gender equality a reality? What are you doing to improve the visibility of rural women and girls? So I would like us to have that kind of discussion. Are you, imp are you amplifying their voices? Are you doing that in your programs? Are you getting to access their knowledge so that we build on that? Thank you very much for your attention.